everyone today I want to show you a few things about how to find out why your internet is going so slow if you've got Comcast I'm going to show you what your modem should be seeing as far as signal strength signal levels signal to noise that kind of stuff and a few tips on getting your Wi-Fi speeds a little bit faster or getting them all the way up to what you're paying for uh, we'll go ahead and start off with just running a speed test I'm here out of Seattle so we'll pick the closest server which is here in Seattle we'll get this started first it's going to test your ping you want that definitely to be, I'm going to say, below about 15 milliseconds. And that's the time it takes to go from you to the server and back. So 10 milliseconds, super good. 178, 177.9 megabits per second. That's awesome. I'm paying for 150. It's going to end up being higher. Um, I am hardwired, so I'm going to get this every single time for the upload speed. Hitting 11.9 to 12 megabits per second. That looks great as well. This is going to run it, the test twice. Um, one's on IPv4, the other's on IPv6. And the test should show up being right about the same. So we'll let this finish up. So with this going through, it tells you how fast your internet is, or not necessarily how fast, but how much information you can transfer at a time, which is what this is actually talking about. So your internet speed is kind of a misconception because it's not so much as how fast you're moving forward, but how much you're moving at the same time. A comparison that I use when I'm teaching people about this is it's not uh, a the hare and the turtle going in a race. It's a, you're trying to move your move your house or move all your bloggings from point A to point B are you going to do it faster in a moped or on a semi truck so a semi truck is going to be your higher speeds so 50, 50 plus megabits a second whereas a moped is going to be more like 5 or 10 or whatnot. And these are just, just examples just so you can get a feel of what this number is actually telling you um, but so let's look into what the signal strength actually is so if you open up a web, web browser and you have one of the Comcast residential gateways, so whether it's a, the Aris XB2, a Technicolor, the Aris or Cisco XB3, um, what you're going to want to do is go up into your URL bar, type this in, 10.0.0.1. It's your default gateway for your modem. Up here where it asks for a username, username is admin, password is password, all lowercase. Um, generally it will not let you if the A is actually uppercase so keep that in mind go ahead and hit login oh, wrong password so type password in it'll ask you if you want to change the password if you've got the Aris or Cisco XB3 just click cancel it actually causes more issues if you forget what it, that is because then you have to do a hard reset to it just a waste of time and the only way you can get to that page is if um, you're already on the wireless network or on a hardwired network. While this is loading up, um, I am in. I'm hardwired. Uh, you can see right here, it's a hardwired connection. Um, hardwired is always going to be a wireless network. Um, this is the computer I use for gaming. So once you get into here, you'll see your wireless networks, devices that are connected, and a few things over here on the left. Um, we're just going to dive straight and we're going to go to connection and then Xfinity network. This is going to kind of pull up all the signal levels for your modem and you can kind of see where you are, where you should be. There's a couple different kinds of signals that you want to look at. There's your downstream received, your upstream transmit, your downstream SNR, and uh, those are the three main ones that you'll be able to see here. There's a few others. Um, but unless you've got the proper equipment and the proper tools, you won't actually be able to read them. But I'll kind of go over what we're looking at here. Um, you'll see all your IP addresses in here. Um, those should automatically populate. Uh, your initialization procedure, this should all say complete. Um, coming down here, I've got the Aris, um, the Aris XB3, which has capable, it's capable of 24 downstream carriers. And but Comcast in my area, we only have 20 carriers that you can bond onto. 
and so what we're looking at here we'll just we'll just look at channel one uh, starting off we got index one that's just how the modem picked up the channels lock status we are locked or bonded onto this channel it's on 627 megahertz uh, the si SNR that's signal to noise ratio 37.64 decibels uh, generally speaking the well as far as Comcast is concerned passing is 35 and above if you're getting below 35 that means you've got some kind of noise on your line and that can be caused by a loose connector a bad connector uh, bad fittings bad cable any kind of stuff like that um, what this number is really saying is how far is your signal from the noise floor uh, if you really want to know what this is you can dive into it on your own but I'm not gonna dive too much further than that for this video uh, your power level this is the signal level that you're receiving at your modem the signal that's coming through the coax is actually a sine wave it's an RF signal um, kinda like your voice uh, how it oscillates up and down above zero the standards for Comcast is company-wide you're supposed to be between negative 8 and positive 10 so I'm sitting right here at about zero all the way across the board um, and then it's got a modulation of 256 qualm uh, does make much difference that's not going to change uh, but you want to make sure that you're between negative 8 and positive 10 decibel millivolts um, and that's for your downstream so that's signal coming to you your upstream you got the same thing the Aris XB3 um, can do eight downstream or excuse me eight upstream carriers whereas most other modems can only do four or a DOCSIS 2 modem can do one but so we've got the same index one first one it picked on to we are locked onto it what frequency it is the symbol rate doesn't make much of a difference this isn't going to change um, it might depending on the area you're in but for the most part it should be the same power level this is how hard the modem has to push to get back to Comcast how loud it has to speak basically 64 qualm that's the same thing as up above for the modulation up for your downstream that'll be the same uh, for the power level you want to make sure that this is above 35 but below 53 uh, closer to the middle so like right here where I've got mine sitting about 40 41 that is kind of the sweet spot for it um, and that, that's your upstream uh, down here it'll show you your errors it looks like I've actually got some coming through it's probably just a little bit of noise on the line um, but basically this actually isn't bad because we've got 527 correctable words and 2883 out of whatever that number is so hundred thousand million yeah out of a lot so two th three thousand out of several million not that big of a deal that's what you're looking at here you want to make sure that you've got all that in here if these numbers are within spec and they are within that the range that I was saying and I'll post that in the description below um, the problem is either your slow internet is probably going to be more related to either a your computer or B your wireless um, and so on that note let's take a look at the wireless we'll scroll back up to the top we'll go down to Wi-Fi And so for your, for Wi-Fi, there's two main types of wireless. Uh, if you want to just get really broad, there's a 2.4 frequency and then a 5 frequency, and these are measured in gigahertz. The difference between the 2.4 and the 5 is just the general speeds of it. Um, let's see, I actually have a, a bookmark. Let's see if I can find it. So right here this is off the Intel website um, we've got our 2.4 this is all a little bit older and so we're gonna go we're gonna look at this so the 802.11 and 2.45 uh, about 600 megabits per second theoretical or the 802.11 AC on the 5 gigahertz 1.3 gigabits per second so generally speaking for most routers um, your 2.4 you're gonna hit between 100 and 150 um, that's out of experience what you'll find 100, 100 to 150 megabits per second in perfect conditions now the 5 gigahertz 
that is the faster network it avoids noise a lot better um, you're gonna end up getting anywhere between 500 and 1.3 gigs for your transfer rate now with that being said if you're only paying for 50 megabits per second for your download speed but you're using this 5 gigahertz network you're still only gonna get your 50 to 55 megabits per second for your download speed but so if you have a router that supports this 5 gigahertz which is just gonna be your basic dual band router or the Aeros or Cisco XB3 modem from Comcast you will have that and it's best to get on it huge improvements on it so we'll, we'll go ahead and open up the 2.4 because that's kind of the standard of what most people have so we'll open this up and I'll show you what kind of configuration you can do on here so for the most part you can change your name change your password down here um, you can change the security mode you can lower it a little bit and that will help your speeds but it's also gonna make it easier for people to get in um, I've noticed that it doesn't make a huge difference and there's something else that we can do that's gonna make a big difference and that's gonna be this channel selection so if you're having some wireless issues and you're living in an apartment complex or some kind of uh, housing unit where you've got a lot of people in close quarters and a lot of people have got their own routers um, if you think of the area that you're in is kind of like a bar um, different tables more people harder to hear same thing with Wi-Fi so if we go to manual here and we open up this channel selector there's 11 different channels so back to the bar analogy uh, we got 11 different channels and this is the one time in life you want to be a loner so if we're having issues uh, 1 6 and 11 are the default channels because they're non bleed channels they're far enough away that they don't see each other um, you could go to channel three or four or eight or nine and that's going to bring you away from these default channels that the routers are going to want to be on and that can seriously help your internet speed so just getting that changed is going to make a world of difference so once you get that selected to whatever channel you want click save settings and go from there run your speed test see where you're at a couple cool tools for to figure out what channel to use if you've got an Android device, there's an app called Wi-Fi Analyzer and that actually gives you a really cool graphical display and it'll tell you pretty clearly what channels have got the most people on it, or excuse me, the most routers on it and you just pick one that's not being used. On iOS, there's not that many apps and they're definitely not as pretty, if you will, as the Android version. Um, but if you are stuck with only an iPhone, you can go and download the airport utility once you download the airport utility you can go in go to your iPhone settings and then go down to the airport utility open that up and then enable the Wi-Fi scanner and then you go back into the app click on Wi-Fi scanner and scan and that'll actually tell you what channel all the wireless networks are around you are on um, it's just more of in a list format than a pretty graphical display so you go through find which channel is used the least and switch your router to it by adjusting this channel selector um, so let's let's take let's go back a page and let's look at that five gigahertz network. So for the two point four and the five, you notice here that I've got them labeled as the two point four and the five. If you don't change that, they will stack on top of each other, and it can cause issues, and it'll toggle back and forth. And it's just best to separate them, whether you name them completely different or if you just put the 2.4 or 5 afterwards. Um, that way you can only connect to the 5 and you're going to have the best connection you can. So we'll open up the 5 and we'll see what we're doing here. So this is a 802.11a and or AC. Um, the channel selection is not as big of a deal here there's a lot more channels that you can get on um, I, I'll just leave it as automatic because they the the physical difference between the 2.4 and the 5 is the frequency at which the signal is oscillating so it's either at 2.4 gigahertz or 5 gigahertz and so the 5 gigahertz the downside to it is that it doesn't have the same range as the 2.4 now when I'm talking about range, um, if you've got a, if you're in an apartment complex, I can almost put money on it that you're not going to have a range issue if you're on that 5 gigahertz network. But if you're in a long house that's really stretched out, one story, going 100 feet down, 
in one direction, you might have a range issue if your router is in one corner of the house and you're trying to connect on the other. So don't really need to worry about this too much. Set your password, all happy here. Save the settings, that's good enough. Um, last, not a huge thing, but what can cause an issue um, on the Ares or Cisco XP3 through Comcast is the Mocha network, and that's media over coax alliance. Um, for Comcast, we don't have anything going on um, that actually utilizes the Smoke and Network as far as the internet goes. Um, your DVR, if you've got the in-ear DVR functionality, whether it's the X1 or the legacy equipment through Comcast, um, that uses Mocha. So, for the most part, you can go in and disable it. Uh, that can help. But for the most part, it's not going to make a huge difference. I have mine disabled just because it's something there that doesn't need to be going. So that's disabled. And another troubleshooting thing you can do is you can go in here to troubleshooting, open this up, see what's going on. You can check out the event logs, see what's there. See if your modem's having some T3 or T4 timeout errors. And what you're going to see there, T3 and T4 errors are upstream and downstream errors. And so if you're getting a bunch of upstream errors, you know, you've got something going on between your modem and Comcast, or if it's downstream error somewhere between Comcast and your modem, uh, best way to find out what's really going on is to get a tech technician out, um, let them know what's been going on, tell them, show them what you've seen. Um, most technicians, when they come out, they should have already looked at this. I know I do. And just let them know what you've seen and go from there. Other than that, uh, leave a comment if you have any questions, I'm more than happy to help. And then other than that, have a good one.